you're invited to worship with an ordained man of God, Bishop Dr. Larry Bryant, overseer of Tabernacle of David Church of the Apostles' Doctrine Incorporated at 8010 Rockbridge Road in Lithonia. This is Come Expecting a Miracle Broadcast. Listen now to the inspiring message of preaching and teaching with Bishop Dr. Larry Bryant. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord once again, Atlanta. And this is the Tabernacle of David Church of the Apostles' Doctrine where Apostle L.T. is the bishop, better known as Bishop L.T. Me, I'm Minister Kenneth Collins. And you're listening to Come Expecting a Miracle, broadcasting live from 1570 WIGO, Atlanta's legendary radio station. <laughs> ah, boy, I feel good this morning. Man, it's a beautiful day. <laughs> boy, all that sunshine out there is falling. <laughs> it's falling down, but well, that's some beautiful sunshine, ain't it? Why you say it's beautiful that rain in there, preacher? Well, I tell you. I'm among the living, and I'm able to see that beautiful, falling sunshine. <laughs> I'm able to feel it on my skin. I know all the grass and the trees and what have you. Man, they loving it. Because without a little rain, then how can you grow? You need that rain, man. You got to get that liquid sunshine on you <laughs> so that you can grow. I'm blessed this morning. Man, it's raining outside, I, uh, you know. But I'm 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 on top of the soil, as they say. I'm among the living and not among the dead. And man, I'm grateful for that. Uh, you ought to be too, you know, because see, when you woke up this morning, you know, if you if you read the scriptures, you know that the word of God says that with each day comes a brand new mercy. And a brand new grace. You get an opportunity to fix whatever you couldn't do yesterday. You, you, you get a chance to repent. Man, you get a chance to seek God more. You get to read your word more. Find out more things that God is capable of doing. Man. <laughs> ah! Well, oh, it's beautiful. Take advantage of it. I know I'm, I'm going to take advantage of it, man, because it's a brand new mercy. And it's a brand new grace every day. God, don't you, you get to start over, man. You start over. You start over. You start from scratch. Use it. Because I know you messed up yesterday. <laughs> if you made like me. You know, if you mankind. If you, made, if, if you came out of the dirt of the earth like I did. Then, man, I, 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 man, you did something wrong yesterday. You, you, you might not, you might not can really pinpoint it. You know, if you good and righteous, Amen. I, I, you know, I need Jesus. I need Jesus every day, and so I'm taking advantage of every opportunity that God giving me. And I hope you will too, because that's what it's for. You see, we are not under the law today. We are under grace and mercy, and because of that. God is looking at your heart. Yeah, yeah, it matters what you do in this flesh. Now, don't, don't let nobody tell you a lie and say, what you do in the flesh don't matter. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to get judged, and you're going to have to give an account for what you do in this flesh. But God sees your heart, and he knows exactly who you are inside. He's on the inside looking out. So, take advantage of it. And if you really love God, man, you slipped and stumbled last night. You, 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 were, you were messed up, man. You were wrong, but repent. Repent. If you woke up and, and got up and looked at all that liquid sunshine like I did in morning, man, take advantage of it. Repent. Take advantage of it. Use it. Give God mercy. Give God the glory and take advantage of his mercy and grace. And we're going before the Lord in prayer. Precious Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we ask right now, Lord God, that you would anoint this broadcast. We thank you for the opportunity that you have given us to, to come before you give you praise. We ask right now, Lord God, that you would help us to take advantage of your opportunities. Let your precious spirit ride the airways through Atlanta. Lord, touch everyone that needs it. Move in a mighty way. Yes, I told them, Okaya. Move in a mighty way, Lord Jesus, because we need you. We need you to come in, Lord God, and touch us. Lord, heal us. Lord God, heal, heal our hearts. Mend our broken hearts. In Jesus' name, Lord, we, 
We pray and ask these many blessings, Lord, and to everyone that hath an ear, let them hear what the Spirit of the Lord have to say unto the church and unto Atlanta on this morning. And we ask in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, that you would do this. In Jesus' name, amen. And, and without further ado, we'll turn it over to Bishop L.T. Good morning, Bishop. Praise the Lord. Good morning, Pastor George. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise him. Praise him. Praise Amen. Praise God to everyone. Just want to leave a word of encouragement for you. I'll be going for the next two weeks. I'll be out of the country once again. Uh, in Asia, doing God's work. The uh, book of Revelation, chapter 8, it said, uh, in verse 1, it said, And there was a silence in heaven for about the space of 30 minutes. I often use that scripture to say when the Bible is silent, we ought to be silent. We don't add to God's word. Amen. Now, a lot of preachers could preach about what was said during that time. But there was no spiritualizing on that. Heaven was silent. And if heaven is silent, sometimes we need to be. And then seven trumpets were given to the angels. And they blew. That chapter is already open. We're living in that time now. In that chapter, if the trump is blue, it was the releasing of contaminated waters, brush fires, the whole nine yards of what we're seeing today is in that chapter. Those trumpets have been blown. The, the Bible is the true calendar. <clears throat> And according to those trumpets, one of the next major uh, signs of the trumpets we're looking at is the sun and the moon being uh, darkened for a period of time. Something is headed toward this galaxy that will collide into our system. But the sun and the moon and the stars will keep it from falling completely on the earth, but it would do damage to our sunlight and moonlight. This is Bible. And scientifically speaking, it is true. They see asteroids and things out there headed in our direction. But nevertheless, the Euphrates has dried up. We are definitely in the last days. But <clears throat> even if there was a silence in heaven, sometimes there needs to be a silence in our lives. We need to stop. Take time out. To examine ourselves and to weigh things out. Sometimes things get out of hand because we're just too busy to stop and try to reason. Two thoughts I received this morning. One thought is on make up your mind, make a decision. But understand, you have to give an account for the decisions that we make. And your brother know that sometimes my mind go with me. So the second thought is, what's the real problem? Remember that. In the Bible, there were certain situations where people had to make a decision. The war was strong and Israel was surrounded by the Philistines. May God bless the speaking of the word. And only Saul and Jonathan had a sword. The Philistines were everywhere. But Jonathan had to make a decision. So you just can't sit there and let things just take its toll on you. You don't have to accept everything that comes your way. Understand what I'm saying? You don't have to accept everything people say and do. You too have a right to respond. But you want to be sure that your response is righteous. And when I say righteous, not just with God, but morally speaking too. The right thing to do. Jonathan made a decision. 
he told his armor bearer, let's get up and go. Let's go down to the enemy and we'll hide ourselves. And if they say, show yourself, then we know God is with us. But we have to make a decision. We just can't sit here and assume the worst. Create a scenario. Think about what could be done, what we should do. There come a time in life when you have to make a decision. And Jonathan chose to get up and go, and God gave him victory. Israel was famine. I think it was the Syrians had them trapped, and there was no food under the land property of Elijah. But Elijah came and prophesied that God would give them food in a day. But during the night, as people were baking each other's children and eating them, the king was horrified. But during the night, the Bible said there were four leprous men. They couldn't go into the city because leprosy was considered a curse to Israel. Now, to the world, leprosy didn't matter. But to the church, leprosy was a curse. You see, the things the world bless, the church denies. Name the leper was a hero in Syria. But when Elijah saw him, he closed the door. Never compromise. And so they were sitting there. Four. I believe it was four. Number of conclusion, all that there is. And they had to make a decision. They said, if we go into the city, we, there's no food there. If we sit here, we die. Make a decision. Make. Quit playing with yourself. Quit playing games. Quit letting your emotions override you and speak your true heart. Make a decision. I have learned in life to make a decision. I would say this. I won't do this. I won't take this. This is not but when I said, but in my heart, that's not how I really feel. So I stopped saying the things that I didn't mean. And I began to be honest with myself. No, I don't want this to happen. No, I don't want to do that. No. They made a decision. And the decision was to let's go into the enemy's camp. Maybe, maybe God will be with us with our mercy and grace. And the minute they made that decision, God moved. You see, when you make the right decision, God moves with you. But you got to make a decision. Joshua told the children of Israel, make a decision. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Don't sit there and waddle in emotions and create scenarios and go through nothing. Somebody says, you call my problems nothing? I tell you what, not enough to go to hell over. And here in this country, in our everyday living, now I travel the world. <laughs> what we call problems ain't nothing. To getting your head cut off. Getting your heart cut out. Being set on fire for the gospel. I'll take a headache any day. Yes, and I've been around those things. I've been in the midst of war, preaching, gunfire every night, living in bone up buildings with the people. Choose you this day. The prodigal son had to make a decision. He looked at everything and he weighed everything out. He said, wait a minute now. Either I can stay living like this or I can go back to my father's house and let the servants even live better than this. I got to make a decision. Am I going to go or am I going to stay? He chose to go, and it was a blessing. Jonathan, are we going to go, or are we going to stay? They choose to go for it, and it was a blessing. Some have made decisions for the wrong. 
But Jesus rather you be hot or cold. So now that leads us to hidden intentions. Saul tried to have David murdered right after he got married to his daughter. He gave David the younger girl so that she can entrap him. He killed, had all the priests in a certain city killed because they gave David food. He threatened to kill his firstborn son, Jonathan, because Jonathan loved David. He searched the countryside up and down, looking for David, letting everybody know, if you help David, you're dead. And all of these men were following him. Even good men like Abner. Trying to find David and kill David. And people were cursing David. But brethren, let's ask Saul. Saul, What's the real reason? But you got us thinking that David is trying to take your kingdom. Or David is out to get you. That's what you told your son, Jonathan. What, you going to give him the kingdom too? But it was David who came down. And you gave your blessings upon him to fight Goliath. Now, there's a bounty on his head. I mean, you're killing people trying to get to this man. You're in a rage. What's the problem for real? So, what's the real problem? Where did it all begin? That you're causing everybody to go in with your spirit to kill this man. To hurt and despise this man whom God is with. You know, I'm getting old and up in life, they say. They say 60s is the, yesterday's 40s, I don't know. But I'm not too far from 70, I don't know. But one thing I like about old folk, they can say what they want. <laughs> they, they don't care. <laughs> But listen, this is my final run. I'm going to fulfill the rest of the prophecies of the prophet of God. I tell you what, I'm going to tell it like it is. What's your real problem? I hear what you're saying. I see what you're doing. But you know what the problem was with Saul? And he tracked David. He was king for 40 years, Saul was. This stuff followed him. You know what it was, son? It all started. Years ago, when they were coming back from the battle, after David had defeated Goliath and helped lead the Israeli army to a mighty battle, the women started singing, Saul killed his thousands, but David killed his ten thousands. And from that point on, he became jealous and despised David. Everybody thought he was chasing David because David wanted the kingdom and wanted to take, but no. Hidden intentions. Hidden intentions. Because he was jealous of a song. A song that the women sang. He felt it took from him. He wanted to kill this man over a song. God is my father. What is your problem? What's the real reason? What choices and decisions have you made? What's the hidden intention? Why are you acting and doing like you're doing? Anybody. Oh, you got people thinking one thing, but what's the real reason? Is it a song? You get moved on a song. 
that provoked you to jealousy or envy against someone or somebody maybe made you mad and they don't know it? Now, David didn't know that in singing that song that it was putting hatred in the man's heart. A lot of people don't know that you're rising up against them because it's hidden. And everything you do is a hidden intention. Why do you say what you say? Anything. Why do you do what you do? What's your real purpose? What's your real intention? What are you really thinking? You know God's going to judge you for that. He's going to judge you for every thought. Nobody escapes. He'll find it. God is my father. He will find it. And Lucifer was created beautiful in all his ways. Protected the mountain of God until iniquity was what? Found. God will find it. He sees it all in his heart. And he'll find what's in you, good or bad. No matter how you make it seem in the eyes of people, you have a decision to make. You're going to stay or go. You're going to do the right thing or not. You're going to choose God or what? When it's all said and done, make a decision. If you look warm, he'll speak you out. What's your hidden attention? What are you doing and why? And is it righteous? A whole tribe of priests were killed because this man Saul got moved over a song. An envious, a rebellion in him. What's your story? Oh, we see what we see, but what is it that we don't see? And for 40 years, 38 years, this man tried to kill David on a song. Let it go. Examine your hearts. Let it go. Examine your hearts. Now, for those of you that don't know us, this is not just, we're not just everyday preachers. This ministry is heavily prophetic. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And has prophesied on nations and have prophesied of things even concerning this city. If, if you go to Apostles Doctrine 200 and you pull up the playlist, hit the list that says prophecies. And you'll see the prophecies that we have put forth that have shaken the world. And then take time out to look at the documentaries. And you'll get a good understanding of who it is talking to you. So now, Apostles Doctrine 200, that's our YouTube channel, then go to playlist on your phone or computer and hit prophecies. And you'll be amazed at why the world is experiencing certain things that they are coming right out of Atlanta. And look at the documentaries to get an understanding of who's talking to you. So now, we've got five minutes left. If you want to call in, you can. If you don't, hey, be silent and look at yourself. Because even heaven has a silence sometimes. And sometimes we need to shut down, be quiet, and think and reason with ourselves before God. So God, help me to make the right decisions. And let my intentions be pure. That's, that's, that's what I'm praying. Thank you, Lord. 4, 4, 3, 6, 1, 1, 5, 7, 1. Lord, help me to make the right decisions. Jesus. And don't let there be any wrong motives Jesus. in what I do. Jesus. Because he'll find it. You'll cause a lot of people to get hurt. Saul had a whole tribe of priests killed over a song. My God. He got jealous over a song. He got jealous over one man. And calls the lives of many. Four four three six one one five seven one. So think about it. Lord, help me to make the right decision. And let my motives be pure. No hidden intentions. No hidden agenda. I just want to do what's right. I want to, I feel the virtue. I feel the virtue. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I feel the virtue. Somebody's receiving what I'm saying. Whole oh, glory to God. Lord, help them. Help us all to examine ourselves.
to make sure our spirits are right. To make sure that we're not being moved like Saul. Having a hidden agenda that's affecting everybody. In the name of Jesus, purify our hearts. In Jesus' mighty name, I feel the virtue. Purify our hearts. The Holy Spirit is touching you right now. God bless you. May God strengthen you. I still feel the virtue. My God, Lord, continue to move over the airway. Continue to move upon people. Because I feel in my spirit that somebody's being touched. Amen. My virtues will never lie. Like I said, amen. We got two minutes left. Amen. Like I said, you go to Apostles Doctrine 200 on the YouTube. And, and then you can go to the playlist and hear prophecies. And you can see the accuracy of God. Let's call it one and make it quick. Praise the Lord, Bishop LT. My prayer is, Lord, let all my intentions be pure and help me to do all things with the right heart and the right spirit. In Amen. Jesus name. God bless you. God bless you. That may be called for maybe one more, and that's it. But if we catch you, if you don't, it's all right. That's it. Oh, we got it. All right. Well, amen. We're grateful. Virtue is not a lie. But uh, one more. You're here. Yeah, yeah praise the Lord. I pray that um, my, my prayer today is that, Lord, please help me to make the right decision and make all my intentions be pure in Jesus' mighty name. All right. God bless you. We thank you, and we appreciate you. Amen. The virtues of God never lie. Jesus. But the virtue is still flowing, and you still receive it. Atlanta, until next time, may the grace of God be upon you. And may peace be still in every home and in every place. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you and we love you. I believe in miracles. I believe in the impossible. And I know that Jesus is in charge of all the affairs of me. Until next time, the brethren will see you. I'll see you three weeks from now. Be blessed. You have been listening to Come Expecting a Miracle broadcast with Bishop Dr. Larry Bryant, overseer of Tabernacle of David Church of the Apostles Doctrine Incorporated at 8014 Rockbridge Road, Lithonia, Georgia, 30058. Join us each Sunday for our 2 p.m. miracle service and at 8 p.m. on Wednesday for Bible study. And for the 24-hour prayer line, call 770-912-0433. 770-912-0433. To make a donation to this ministry, you may do so at Tabernacle of David Church, P.O. Box 390156, Snellville, Georgia, 30039-9997, or email us at Dr. L. Bryant at T-O-D-C-A-D-I-N-T-L dot com.